in for moment to moment. Come on in, come on in, Instagram, what's going on my Instagram family? What's going on my, uh, what's going on my Facebook family? What's going on? Come on in. Come on in, I want you to say I do not own the rights to the music, but I have permission to play as a praise and worship song. Come on in. It's just a moment. Tuesday time. Come on in. Where everybody is at. Yes, we're listening and giving our praise on with your power by LaCrae and Tasha Cobbs Leonard. Praise the Lord. He gives you all the power. So come on in. I want you to hit that share button when you're coming in. I want you to hit that share button when you're coming in. Come on in. It's just a moment. Tell us time. Yes. Yes, he will. Come on in. Come on in. Hey, Lo, what's going on? Come on in, everybody. It's just money to the time. Yes. When you come in, I need you to hit that share button. I need you to hit that share button. Invite your friends. Let your family know it's testimony to the time. I got a Holy Spirit day word. And guess what? Holy Spirit led me to give away a prayer box. So we got a prayer box given away today. So come on in. Get yourself ready so you can hear the word and be blessed today. I got a Holy Spirit led word. Come on in. We're listening to Your Power by LaCrae and Tasha Thompson. This is a very popular song right now. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Come on. Yes. In my darkest hour. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. Get in with the praise song. Your power. It's by his power, baby. I know. He makes a way. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in, Instagram. Where my Instagram family at? Hey, Brenda down there in Alexandria, my BFF. Come on in, y'all. Come on in. Let your friends know. I need you to hit that share button and tag everybody. Whatever you need to do to let them know that Testimony Tuesday is live and we are having an awesome praise and worship in the beginning. We got a Holy Spirit in word. And as I was saying, I'm going to be giving away a prayer box. Who knows what the Holy Spirit is going to need me to do. But you are here and so I thank you for coming on. Come on. Come on in. Hit that share button. And welcome. Good afternoon. It's a beautiful Tuesday here. It's hot, but it's still beautiful. And we know God is the creator of all things. So you all come on in. Come on in. Yes, God has been so faithful. I thank you, Lord. Yes, come on in. Come on in. Yes, it's by his power that we know we can make a way. So welcome, welcome to Testimony Tuesday. It's so good to have you all here. Those of you who are joining me live, I appreciate you. And those of you who will take the time to listen to the replay, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you for taking your time out at midday on a Tuesday. You could be anywhere else, but you decided to join me on Testimony Tuesday. So I just say thank you, thank you, thank you. I pray that your day so far thus far has been going good. My day has been going good. Anytime I'm prepping and getting ready for Testimony Tuesday, God is just so amazing. He does a lot of speaking and sharing with me. And so I just thank God for who he is. So as I was saying, welcome, 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 welcome. I want to send a special shout out to those who are joining me for the first time and then those who listen to the replay for the first time. Welcome, welcome to Testimony Tuesday. Glad to have you here and it's it's my pleasure of having you to take your time to listen to the replay. For those of you who don't know and those who have been rocking with me, I am Anita Johnson Merchant known as the Prayer Advocate. I am sold out to prayer. So why do I say I'm the Prayer Advocate and why do I say I'm sold out to prayer? And it's because of this word right here psalms 116 and two new living translation and this is what it says because he bends down to listen i will pray as long as i have breath yes i will pray as long as i have breath just knowing that god bends down to listen to me when i go into my prayer time or when i have my conversation with him now, the way I go about helping people with their prayer life is I have a signature course that's called the Prayer Incubator. 
The Proud Incubator is a, a signature course. It's seven weeks. And what you do is you walk into the incubator one way, but you come out with a totally different mindset of your prayer life and you move forward in maintaining consistency. This course will help you put things in place to be consistent. Prayer is one of the things that most of God's people struggle with trying to maintain and be consistent. It's usually put on the back burner or we usually say, well, when I get time, or we use the excuse that God understands. So I want to encourage you if you're struggling in your prayer life, if you are doing the same thing that you were doing in January, you're going to get the same results. You have to change something if you want something different. So I encourage you to be aware of and pay attention. There's going to be some posting coming out. The new session is going to be in October of this year. So I want to encourage you to uh, be on the lookout and sign up for the prayer incubator once the information comes forward. So let's get into the announcements. So you all know I have a YouTube channel, Nita J. Merchant, and I invite you to join me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel by going to the YouTube app. Hit that button. If you're not already a YouTube member, join YouTube. It's a free app. I want you to go to Nita J. Merchant. I need you to hit that thumbs up. I need you to subscribe, and then I need you to share. God is doing some wonderful things, and I'm going to start utilizing YouTube a little bit more than I've been using the other other apps that I am on. So I encourage you, go to YouTube, look and subscribe for Anita Johnson Merchant. Anita J Merchant is what it's under. I encourage you to do that. Another thing is I want to encourage you with is journaling. How many of you sit and struggle with sitting still in the presence of God? We had an awesome time last Sunday, and I tell you, God is speaking. God is powerful. And the thing about God that makes him so powerful is that he can speak to each one of us individually right where we sit in our homes. And so on Sunday mornings from 6 to 6.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, we have a journaling session where we sit still. Sit quiet in the presence of God. We start at 6 a.m. promptly. I usually open with the scripture. We hold our journals and we pray over our journals before we begin to write. We uh, share a scripture that you can use to meditate on during the week or for whatever you may need it for. And then we sit, sit still for about 20 minutes listening to hear what God has to say. And then we write what we hear. You will be surprised how powerful God speaks in quietness and you will be surprised the things that you may have been missing hearing from God just because you are so busy, just because you have a lot going on in your life, just because you don't feel like you have time to sit still for 20 minutes of your Sunday morning is all it is. And I tell you, God does move mighty and he does speak. So join us on Sunday mornings. I usually post a flyer. On Saturday evenings to remind you about the Sunday morning, 6 to 6.30 a.m. journaling with the Zoom information. And here's the beauty about our journaling time. Well, you don't have to turn on your Zoom camera. You can dial from your Zoom app or your phone. You don't have to turn it on because we don't want to use a distraction of paying attention to what someone looks like on their Zoom versus leaving all of our time and energy to hear what God has to say. And so we have our cameras off. I even have mine off. And we sit still. We come together. We know where two or more gather. God is in the midst according to his word. And so he is in each one of our homes who are there on Sunday mornings speaking to us individually of what we may have missed or he have been wanting to tell us. So join us. This is Happy Black Business Month. And I want to send a happy shout out to all the black owned businesses here in the local Houston area or just all around the world. Happy Black Business Month. Now you all know on my uh, Testimony Tuesday Live, I always give a shout out to an African-American business owner or a business person who has a business, especially one that I have utilized and catered to or that I really enjoy. And so this week of a testimony to the shout out, I want to send a shout out to Day 6 Coffee Company. It's Day 6 Coffee Company. I want to send a shout out to them. It's loca located in downtown Houston. It's owned by two brothers. 
And they named for the, the name for the day six coffee came about from when God gave us the passage in his word where he said he would give us control over plants and animals and, and to humans. He gave that control over on day six when he was creating the world. So day six comes from that particular scripture in that particular part of the word. What I love about Day 6 Coffee is it's more than just a coffee shop. It is a, a, a place where you can go and relax. You can go and meet and, and, and talk with people. You can read. You can do other things. They have a nice variety of uh, a menu. The coffees are amazing. My favorite thing there is the lavender latte. I love their lavender latte. What else do I love? I love their brisket tacos. They are good. And so I want to send a shout out to them. They are one of my favorite coffee shops here in the Houston, Texas area. Um, I am a coffee shop girl because when I go to a coffee shop, I not only go for coffee, but I go to write. That's where I have wrote some of my, my most precious things, where I have wrote different things that I have yet to publish. But I wrote Trophy of Grace at this particular coffee shop day six coffee shop and it helped me bring it all together to be able to get it published so i want to send a shout out to day six coffee company in downtown houston i want to uh, send a shout out to them because i'm one of their ogs as they say one of their regular visitors to the point to where i have my own personal cup my own personal cup. Can you see this? It says day six coffee. I have my own personal cup. And so whenever I go to day six coffee company, I take this with me and they make me the most tasteful, delicious lavender uh, latte. And so shout out to you, the two brothers who are the owners of day six coffee company. Happy black business month. If you live in the Houston area, I encourage you to go by and visit them. They also have some other things that are in their coffee shop that that just doesn't make them just a coffee shop. When you go into Day 6 Coffee Shop, you're going to see beautiful, beautiful art by black artists all displayed on all the walls that you can uh, purchase. You're going to also see uh, just books that people are selling, uh, other items like uh, shea butters and other things that they may be selling, earrings, you just name it. He has a place in his uh, coffee shop to where you can go and do those things, a uh, uh, shop. So it's not just a coffee shop. It's a month, month more of other things. What I love about the two brothers at Day 6 Coffee Shop, they are opening their business to help other business owners sell their items. So if you're in the Houston area, visit them. If you're not and you're coming to Houston on a trip or something, put that on your agenda to make sure you stop by Day 6 Coffee Company. So let's get to the prayer box giveaway. I haven't given away a prayer box in a while. And the Holy Spirit, when I was preparing for this testimony Tuesday, said, hey, it's time to give away another prayer box. Now, sometimes I will send a prayer box to someone who the Spirit leads me to send it to. For the simple fact, it doesn't have to be on testimony Tuesday time, but sometimes God put it in my spirit and in my heart to just send someone a prayer box who may be going through a few things or who may not have sent something to me that I pick up on that they are going through some things. And those of, of the people who have received prayer boxes, I get a lot of DMs saying thank you, how it's blessed their life, how it's changed their life, how it's helped them with their prayer life. So today's prayer box giveaway is going to be Continuing up on this. Here is what you're going to have to do to be considered for the prayer box. The first thing is you have to share this video of today's Testimony Tuesday. And you have to tag me when you share it. The second thing you're going to have to do is DM me your favorite scripture. What's your favorite scripture? Everybody should have a favorite scripture. What's your favorite scripture? You have to DM me that. And then last but not least, you have to DM me your favorite worship song. What's your favorite worship song that gets you into the spirit of spending time with God or getting into his presence? What is your favorite worship song? So again, here are the three things that you have to do to be considered for today's giveaway prayer box. Share the video and tag me when you share it. DM me your favorite scripture and DM me your favorite worship song. Do those three things that you could be considered for the prayer box. It's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. What can I say? It's going to be nice. 
So I'm going to go into my testimony in, in words of encouragement. Back in August of 2022, I was given a warning by my primary doctor about being in the pre diabetic stage. So those of you who know there's diabetes, uh, type A and type two, one, type two, whatever. Then there is where you can be pre-diabetic where you are, your body is letting you know you're about to go into the diabetic realm. And so back in August of uh, last year, when I went to my primary doctor for my annual physical, she said to me, she said, now I've looked at your history and diabetes is very prominent, very strong in your family. And I was like, yeah, my mother had it, my father had it, and some of my siblings have it. So sidebar, see, we wonder why the doctors ask us about our family history. Like, did your mother have cancer? Did your dad have cancer? Do you have any family members who've had cancer? Whatever it is, there's a reason behind that, you guys. And that's because that helps them pay attention for things that you could possibly encounter and have in your health issues. And so when I went on, uh, when she went on, she went on to share with me. She said, now, it's very strong and prominent in your family history. It's a generational thing, basically. She said, but you, you're in your 60s and it's just flaring up, coming to the point of where you're pre-diabetic. She said, but you can beat this because it, it, it's so, it was so long before it even started showing up in your health issues. She said, but you can beat this. She said, you can beat this, but there's one thing you're going to have to do. You're going to have to exercise and change your diet for the rest of your life. I'm going to say that one more time. She said you're going to have to exercise. And you're going to have to change your diet for the rest of your life. And so when she shared that with me. I began to listen to what she was sharing with me. Some things that I can do. She said you need to exercise at least three or four times a week. She said you need to cut back on this and that. You know she, she, she shared a whole lot of things that I could do. She said but your life doesn't have to be boring with your food. And your life will be energetic and you'll live longer with the exercising. So me being who I am, I was like, oh, yeah, I want to live long, a long, long time. I want to live as long as my father. My father was 92 when he died. And so I said, OK, so I, I took a few notes in my mind of what she was telling me. She said, but what's what is going to boil down to is you have to make the decision to want to do it. She said, you can't use the excuse about you're too old. She said, you can't use the excuse about you can't do it. You can't use the excuse about it's not possible. She was very, very positive and uplifting and telling me about some things that I could do to change the situation of from being pre-diabetic to no diabetes in my, in my system and not going over into diabetes. Now, I've seen a lot of people. I know a lot of people who have diabetes. Like I said, I have it prominent in my family. I've seen what uh, a lot of people go through with diabetes. And so she told me, she said, I'm going to give you a year for you to change your diet and you incorporate exercise. And she said, remember, put things in place that you will be able to do for the rest of your life with your food and you definitely need to incorporate exercise. She said a lot of people with diabetes do not fight diabetes very well because they refuse to exercise. She say, or they're stuck in their ways and they don't want to change their diets. And so I listened to all of that and she was speaking the truth. So I had to make a decision. When I got back to my Jeep, I sat there for a few minutes and I opened my mouth and I said, Lord, I do not want to have or, or develop diabetes. I said, Lord, I need your help and I need your strength on what I need to do to do this. So I made a decision right then in that parking lot in the presence of God. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you don't have to have diabetes. You can beat diabetes. And so when I heard that from God, listen at this, because this is going to lead into my Holy Spirit word led, or led word today. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you have the power given to you already by God to beat diabetes. So I knew I was going to have to make a change. I knew I was going to have to change some eating habits. And I knew I was going to have to adjust my time, my schedule, and incorporate exercise. Bear with me because I'm going somewhere with this. So after making that decision, it wasn't easy in the beginning. Don't let me mislead you. 
because it was a struggle in the beginning because I was making excuses. I was saying, oh, I'll get around to it. I was saying, oh, well, I came all the way up to my 60s and never really developed diabetes, so I'm should, I should be okay. Just saying all those excuses and giving myself all those excuses. You know how we do when we don't want to do something? We have a whole lot of excuses about why we can't. And instead of relying on the God who says we can do all things through him. And so I said, okay. So what I did was after a couple of weeks and in, into the month of September of last year, I said, I'm going to beat diabetes. I'm going to beat this. I'm going to exercise and I'm going to change my diet because I want to live a long life. Again, it was a struggle in the beginning. I exercised one or two days and I'd say, oh, that's enough. But what I started realizing, I started feeling better. Then what I started realizing, I started feeling better when I started taking some things out of my diet that I loved and added some things to incorporate that I could begin to love. I'm sharing this because it's going to bless somebody today. You're wondering why you're struggling. You wonder why you feel like God is not really answering your prayers. You feel like you just keep going in a circle. You don't know what's to do. But my, 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 my motion and my mentioning of this is because when we go to God about something, well, we need a change. We need to move forward. We don't want to keep doing the same thing. We don't want to go backwards. We are required to do something. So I made the commitment to myself to exercise and change my diet. I stopped buying things at the grocery store that I knew I should not eat because the Holy Spirit was like, if you don't have it in the house, you won't eat it. I started buying things at the grocery store that I can incorporate that taste well and that I could begin to enjoy and enjoy and love. I stopped buying things that I knew was not healthy. I just stopped buying it. So what I began to do was, because my, my uh, primary doctor, she shared this with me. She said, Anita, in your prayer time, she said, I want you to add, Lord, change the taste of my palate. Change my taste buds to where I won't crave and want those things that I'm not supposed to have. The uh, primary doctor that I have, she's a Christian, and, and we sometimes when I go, we, we're a little longer because we get to talking about the goodness of God. So she said, you just, just pray that while you're having your prayer time. Ask God to change your palate because your palate is what sends the message to the brain telling you that this is what you need to eat. Oh, this going to taste good. Oh, you know, you want it. You know, it's a mind thing and it's a palate thing. And so I begin to ask God, change my palate. I don't want to eat the things that I'm not supposed to eat. I don't even want to crave the things that I'm not supposed to crave. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I slip and I may go and eat something that I'm not supposed to. But guess what? My body lets me know, no, this wasn't the right thing to give. You know you hadn't been eating that. You know you don't need that. Holy Spirit to speak to me and say, now watch how you feel after eating some things that you're not supposed to eat. Do I slip occasionally? Yes, I do. But what I've made my mind up and what I've decided because God has given me the strength, he's answered me with that palate thing of changing my taste. He's, he's helped me to maintain exercise in my, my schedule. He's helped me with everything I asked, but it was all because I made the step to do it. See, we pray and we want God to do things, but we don't want to change nothing. We want to keep doing the same thing and we keep expecting God to do something different. You have to make up in your mind that you're going to change with the help of God. He says we can do all things with the strength that he gives us. So I found in my word too to help me out with this challenge that I was had, had of. Because when I go back to the doctor next month, me and her are going to do the Holy Ghost dance. We're going to be shouting and jumping because when she take that blood from me and they run that A1C level, see, I'm speaking, it, the numbers are going to be low. And she's going to say, don't worry about prediabetes. Just keep doing what you're doing. I'm already claiming it. So I, I shared this today with you all because it leads into the Holy Spirit led word. I seek a scripture that I meditate on to help me stay on track. See, it all comes back around to the word of God. That's why he wrote the book, so that we could have something to live by. So let's pray. Father God, mm, 
Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we thank you today for this opportunity to come and get into your presence. Lord, I ask that you use me to share this word that you have given me and prepared me to share. I ask that you move me totally out of the way. But Lord, I ask those who are hearing the sound of my voice, who hear what goes forth, that they take heed, that they allow it to digest into their spirit, but they hear you speaking to them, Lord God. Remove me totally. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So the Holy Spirit led word title today is New Moving Forward. Simple. New Moving Forward. And the reason why I gave it that title was because I was asking God when he was giving this word to share with you all, what, what is the, the, the purpose and what is the, the thing you want us to get out of this? And he said, I want my people to start thinking about new and moving forward. So we are in the month of August and according to the word of God, it symbolizes new beginnings because August is the eighth month. You are in this month given an opportunity for a new if you are here today, you are given an opportunity by God for a new. With it being a new opportunity, we should be grateful and be willing to do what we need to change. The fact that we enter 2023 and we have today is our opportunity to change our lives so that we can receive the new and move forward. The number one thing you can use to do this is you can move forward by spending more time in the word of God. The number one thing that holds us back from allowing us to accept God's new and moving forward is fear. We fear. We fear anything that we have to change. And that's the way the mind will set you up to think that you have to be fearful for the new and the moving forward change that you need to make. It, it, the fear comes about when you don't know what to expect or it comes about when you don't know what you're going to do next. In Isaiah 43, 18, here's what it says. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. So see, we have a new day, a new month. We're in a, in a different time of everything where we can move and receive the new and move forward. The Bible, God's word offers advice and encouragement for beginning a new. And I shall move forward. Speak that in the atmosphere. I shall move forward. In Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, and I'm reading the Good News Translation. Here's what it says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Never rely on what you think you know. Remember, the Lord is in everything you do, and he will show you the right way. I want you to write this down. Take notes of this scripture. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, God word, uh, News Translation. This will bless your soul on meditating on it. So let's sidebar a little bit here. Some things we do that we've been doing all of our lives or a habit that we recently picked up or we've done for several times. Sometimes some of those things you do, we do, we don't want to let go of them. Why? Why don't we want to let go of them? Why don't we want to accept God's new and him helping us move forward? Why? Not only is it because of fear, but it's because you're comfortable, content, you feel good, it's hard, and you're complacent. I'm going to say that one more time. It's because you're comfortable, you're content, it feels good, and you say it's hard, you get complacent. Simply because all of that involves laziness. Oh, Nita, why would you just jump out and say that word? Because that's what it boils down to. You're comfortable, you're content. Because see, you feel like it's working or you have convinced yourself in your mind that it's working when you really can see that it's really not. Anytime you go to God about anything, I'm telling you anything, there will be something required of you. It's not going to just fall out of the sky. It's not just going to change because you said it in your word. It's not just going to do that. It's going to be something required of you. Sidebar for an example of that is my doctor's appointment that I went to that I shared with you all earlier. When I got that diagnosis, when I got that word from her, it was something that God required me to do when I went to him and prayed and asked him to help me. 
You go to God and we go to God and ask God for uh, uh, to change or to help us move forward about everything, right? We, we go to God, oh God, change the relationships. Oh God, help me with my finances. Oh God, change my job or I need a new job. Oh God, the children getting on my nerves. Oh God, this marriage, just I don't know if I'm going to stay in it. Oh God, these material things. I want a new house. I want a new car. I want new this. I want to do this. I want to do this. We go to God with all those things, right? I'm going to give you five things that you can do to start right now today to move into the new and to move forward that God has for you. Number one, increase your time with God. If you're spending 30 minutes, increase it to an hour. If you're spending 15 minutes, increase it to 30 minutes. Increase your time with God to receive what the new is and to receive what God wants to move you forward into and to get the directions on what you need to change. That's one thing you can start today. Number two thing you can start today is do a self-search. Slow down. You know what you need to change. You know what's not working. Nobody has to tell you that. So you can start, just slow down, do a, do a search of yourself. I had to do a search of myself when I needed to change from going into being a diabetic to the pre-diabetic. I had to do some searching and saying, what are you doing, Anita? And one of the things I discovered is going to the grocery store, buying the wrong things. So I had to stop buying the wrong things. Number three, go back and ask God to help you with what you discover is holding you back from moving into your new or moving forward. There's something you're probably doing today that's holding you back from moving into the new and from moving forward of what God has for you. See, a lot of times we hold up everything and a lot of things that God has for us to be new or to move forward because we don't want to change or we don't want to be uncomfortable or we don't want to move something or add something or just change something. We just want to be complacent and stay in where we're at. Number four. Take action, even the smallest step, even if it's 15 more minutes or whatever, change it. Put it into your life. Put it into your schedule. Take the small steps because you are in the month of the new beginnings. This is the August month. Don't let your going into September be like you was in January. Don't allow yourself to keep going to God, asking him to change things and to do something different when you are not willing to change, when you're not willing to be uncomfortable, when you're not willing to, to shift your mindset, when you're not willing to do something different. Take action. And do it. We put forth effort to do a whole lot of other things. But yet we fail to do or make a change when God tells us. He's going to tell you what to change. He's going to tell you what you need to do to be able to receive the new and move forward. Number five. Make a daily commitment to yourself. You owe yourself the new the moving forward. Make a commitment to yourself. You know how you committed to going to that job every day? You committed to be there on time. You committed to get up whether you're tired or not and go to the nine to five or whatever you do. You make a commitment to make sure you do that. Make that commitment to yourself that you're going to do what you need to do to walk into that new and to move forward of where God is trying to take you. Make the daily commitment to yourself. You deserve it and you are worth it. As I close, all of this comes back around, you know me, to prayer, your prayer life. Your prayer life is the key. It's no way around it. You can't do it without a prayer life. You can't do it without getting into the presence of God. You cannot do it in your own strength. As a matter of fact, I don't know about you, but I always say, God, I don't want to try to do this in my own strength because I'm either going to mess it up or I'm just not going to do it. Embrace a fresh start from God. Um, embrace the new. You're in the month of new beginnings. Embrace the new to go into the other part of 2023. Embrace it. But it's going to require you to take the steps and the initiative to bring about the new. God has so much new for you. God has so much uh, He want, he's wanting to give you to move forward. Don't let the adversary hold you back. Keep you bound, shackled down in your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit, having you to believe that there's nothing new you can receive or that you can't move forward. You can with the help of God.
2 Corinthians 5 and 17 English Standard Version says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I don't know about you, but everything new that God has for me, I want to receive it. And so whatever he tells me, I need to shift, what I need to change, what my mind needs to do, how I need to add, what I need to remove. I am going to do it and I'm willing. And I pray the same for you, that you just take a stand. Take a commitment to yourself. Take a commitment to God and say, God, all the new you have, bring it on because I'm ready to receive it. I am ready to receive. I am ready to move forward. I am ready for my new beginning. This is the month of August, a new beginning. So let's go boldly to the throne of God. Gracious Father, today we say thank you. Thank you for the word that has went forth. Father, we pray and we thank you for leaving the word of how it teaches us to be able to do the things that you have called us to do. How it teaches us even about our health, even about the new that you want to give us, even about how, how to move forward. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, as we receive that word today, let it digest into our mind, body, souls, and spirits. Let our hearts receive it and let it soak and simmer within us to where we know the new you have for us we want to receive it and, and the moving forward we want to be able to do it Lord but we know we cannot do it without you and so today Lord I'm declaring and decreeing that those who can hear the sound of my voice that they will be able to receive this word and that they will be able to move forward they will open themselves up to receive the new and whatever you tell them to do to change that they are willing and open to do it. Let them not be, be remaining in contentment and complacement. And let them not rely on the excuses that they have continually to use. Lord, we want a change in our lives. We want to change whether it's our health, whether it's mentally, whether it's our physical health. Whatever it may be that's holding us back from receiving the new, we ask you to reveal it to us like never before. And Lord, as we move forward from this day, we just want to say thank you for what you're going to do. We want to say thank you for how you're going to do it. We want to say thank you that we are a willing vessel and open to the change. We want our new and we want to move forward. So today, Father, we say thank you. I pray that my brothers and sisters, you all that hear my voice in this prayer, that you receive it and that you declare and decree it and open up your mouth and say, God. I want to receive the new and I want to move forward. It's in Jesus name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I pray that this word has blessed you. I pray that not only has the word blessed you, but that you are able to receive the new and move forward with what God has waiting for you. He's just waiting on you. I'm going to say that one more time. He's just waiting on you. Stop being the person who is holding your new back and you moving forward. Only you can do it. Your BFF can't do it for you. Your husband can't do it for you. Your children can't do it for you. The job can't do it for you. The church can't do it for you. You have to decide to receive the new to move forward in your new beginnings. I pray that all of you have new beginnings that, that will blow your mind. I declare and decree that when you receive the new instructions and on how to move forward, that you would take it and run with it and do what God has called you to do, to receive the new and move forward. You all be blessed. And remember this, let nothing good or bad interrupt your consistent prayer life. Have an amazing, amazing day. Make sure you share this and don't forget about the three things you need to do to be considered for the prayer box giveaway today. I love you in the love of God. Be blessed. Yes. Come on, Jesus. Yes. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Lois.
Yes. From moment to moment. I needed to get where I'm going. Yes. I needed to fight the opponent. The power that moves every mile. Protect me when you surround me. I know it's the power living in me. Yes. You can make that change. They told me it's over. I'm finished. But God said just wait a minute. Yes. Thank you all for joining me on Instagram. I got some Instagram. Yes. 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 Yes.